Right, um, it's been a little while since uh, we've done a Facebook update. There's a few factors uh, for that. One, we've been really bloody busy. Um, it takes time uh, and us getting out here to do the camcorder work. Uh, two, I've been in Thailand for a couple of weeks, as you probably saw on our Facebook post. Um, had a few cars to help Chris sort out and finalise over there, which uh, went incredibly successfully. Um, also, Chris got to show me around some of the sites of Thailand, which I've never visited before, and it was absolutely amazing and beautiful. Some awesome uh, treks to do in the mountains in four-wheel drives, which Chris is very keen to do if anybody wants a, a bit of a holiday over there with some four-before work. Um, and then I went to Santa Pod and watched some top fuel drags just for four days, five days. It's all hard work, isn't it? Which uh, happened just after Thailand, so I wasn't here for quite a while. It was sort of, I got nervous shivers. I hadn't played with cars for a while. Um, anyway, intro to this video. MGR V8 3.9 hot wire injected. Morgan plus eight fully to gems injected. Morgan plus eight with, I believe, a 4.6 throttle bodied fuel injected with a standalone ECU and no distributor and coil packs that's playing up, which is why it's come all the way from Romania for us to sort out. Rover P6, absolutely gorgeous car, which they all are, but this one in its own price as well, which we all may be actually be selling. Um, it's got one of our engines in, reconditioned gearbox. Uh, we will be guaranteeing this vehicle and selling it on behalf of the customer. Um, this is actually featured in our timelines in the past, if you look back but we'll put a full uh, history uh, sort of pack together for it as well. That's now going to go through detailing uh, to make it clean because although it looks clean right now, this ain't clean. Um, so that'll be happening. And then, as we all know, one of my favourite cars, the MGB GT, and this is ranked right up there as one of the best films I've seen, um, with the exception of the engine that didn't run right and overheated, which is why it's come all the way from Cornwall for us to sort out. Um, it's not one of our engines, um, the guy didn't know of us back then, but it's made the journey up here to be put right. Um, finishing the intro, we need to go in the workshop. Okay. So, okay, a uh, couple of cars in the workshop. So this Westfield S8 or SATE um, is in for ignition and fuel injection upgrades. We'll, so we'll cover that. And this MGB Roadster has one of our engines in and is in for nut and bolt spanner check and a decent setup on the engine. So that's the intro concluded. Other than one car that's arriving today, which hopefully will be here in time for you to edit this in, and that one over there that's been on a dyno session recently. BGT then. Oh, yeah, one of my favourite places to sit, especially when they're a nice one like this. Um, it's a hard life really, isn't it? Yeah, it's awful, isn't it? Got the Mazda gearbox in this, absolutely effing fantastic gearbox. Um, just bish bash bosh, don't, you don't think about your gear changes, they're just there, it's fingertip changing. Why would anybody fit any other gearbox to a V8 MGB these days? I have no idea because that works fantastically. Um, so, as we just said, this isn't one of our engines, but it's come all the way from Cornwall for us to do a setup on it, ignition upgrades, and sort of uh, overheating issue. Um, the overheating issue was vastly down to a poor setup. Um, when stationary we've still got the issue which we think is down to the fans but we're still um, playing with that uh, and the pressure cap so um, yeah we're actually on road test to kind of uh, collect a bit more data on there uh, we just reseated the pressure cap which we don't think we're seating properly it's a 15 pound pressure cap and shouldn't be ample uh, doesn't necessarily mean it's right that it's a good one so we might order another one in to uh, try that as well it just pushes a tiny bit of water out uh, even when the engine temp is only at about 95 degrees after heavy driving so we we'll do a little bit of that now to test it with it reseated if 
into this little 3.5 and we'll pull 5th at 30. Easy. Let's, let's just take it down a notch, 5th gear. Just over 20 there. Foot's off the pedal, chokes all the way in. We're not raising the idle with it or anything like that. It's just stably pulling about 22, 23. And I would dare say it would accelerate from that in a little lightweight car like this. There we go. We videoed one of these in comparison to the Mazda to demonstrate torque against horsepower, didn't we? We did. We really must put that FAQ video, or finish that FAQ video up soon. We had to put like 12 or 13 crankshafts in the back of the BGT to make it weigh the same as the Mazda RX-8 for a fair comparison, didn't we? It's quite a lot. It's a fun day, wasn't it? For a 3.5, it's a nice engine. I think, um, I believe, for what we know, it's got a Hurricane cam in it, which is very similar to our 270 camshaft, a little bit more lift. Uh, I'm not too sure on the duration, but in ballpark it's very similar to our mid-range 270 camshaft, which in an MG, yeah, really nice setup on a 3.5. I mean, like I say, that gearbox, you can just, well, there's third, we have fourth, fifth, they're just there. You don't have to think about gear changes with that Weber Edelbrock carburetor just responds to everything we tell it to do. The ignition system is hitting it with a stonking great spark. That's what we call it, a stonking great spark. Stonking? Yeah, I don't know where that came from. Um, it, everything's just working incredibly well together. Um, yeah, really, really nice combo. How every MG should be. Carry on into the countryside, I think. Yeah, why not? Right, the MG RV8 then. We've seen, I want to say thousands of these. Um, it's, probably, it's definitely well up there in the hundreds. Um, supplied all of this kit out for more than we've had in the workshop, uh, including places in Japan, uh, etc. So, um, ignition upgrades, magnetical leads, power amplifier. Uh, which is mounted up there, there. Yep. there somewhere. Um, relocating the vacuum advance, which I think has actually already been done on this vehicle, uh, but put a new line on and a new vacuum advance because the vacuum advance had failed. And then rechipping the ECU, uh, tornado ECU chip, um, transforms the way they car, uh, the, the way they drive. This car actually came into us with high emissions. They are up around eight and a half percent CO, which is ridiculous. Um, even if the car didn't have cats on, it's still ridiculous. This does have cats on. Um, thankfully, they're not damaged by running. Well, they weren't damaged by running that rich. Uh, the COs are now down to about 0.02% on a fast idle test, uh, and similar on an idle test um, with hydrocarbons. Of only a couple of hydrocarbons on the fast idle test where it matters for an MOT. So this one is fully sorted for what it came in for and transformed in the way it drives, as they always are with this program of upgrades. I always call this like a phase one correction package because uh, that's more how I see it. It's really what they should have been when they came from the MG factory. Um, Blue Morgan is a GEMS powered vehicle, as I said in the intro, so uh, it doesn't have a distributor. Um, I can do this while we're on camera. We'll be opening the other bon side of the bonnet, Steve, if you transition over there. No, um, no pressure. So. No bonnet stays, obviously, with a, a, a fabulous car like this. Um, so yeah, it runs uh, effectively a GEMS P38 Range Rover engine. It's actually a Defender 1950th anniversary style engine when you look at the, the front end setup on the on the uh, engine. So this, uh, very like, much like the MG RV8, required ignition upgrades and fueling upgrades. All of that is done with the GEMS ECU and hair and Magna Core plug leads because there's no distributor to work with. Um, Morgan, in her infinite wisdom, removed the knock sensors on this, which is how the car detects where pinking is and how it um, adjusts its ignition timing. Um, uh, we believe they did that to kind of put the ECU into a kind of default map to help it pass emissions. 
um, because that and coupled with a few other settings in the ECU that they really got wrong alongside the fuel maps they didn't change from Range Rover uh, totally stuffs the way this car drives from factory um, so this came in uh, because it was stalling a lot of junctions uh, very frequently hopefully you can hear me because there's a jet going over overhead um, so I think what we'll do now um, this is all done it's lovely we'll go for a ride all right sounds good Okay, so the main purpose of this road test obviously is to check uh, idle and uh, pulling up to junctions, so we'll do a few stop starts. Um, obviously the car's transformed in how it drives, chipping and reprofiling of the ignition tables has uh, done its work as they always do on these 4 litre GEMS Morgans, just the same as when we do ignition upgrades on the earlier ones with distributors. So uh, it's installed the knock sensors, which are missing on these models. Morgan, in their wisdom, removed them to fill the ECU. So again, just to check that we don't have any stalling issues, we'll just uh, pull over here, like we were pulling up to a junction. It's pretty rock steady, isn't it? Seems fine to me. Yeah. We'll just pull out and then uh, stop again, cover a bit more of a abrupt stop. Yeah, doesn't doesn't fault or under 750 rpm. We'll avoid the uh, freshly tied pit road. But infinitely more smooth to drive as always with these after the chipping. Um, the main reason we fit the chips as part of a full ECU package is because the. Um, Immobilised section of the alarm on these, the wiring Morgan sort of got a bit wrong. It's tied in amongst all of the dash wiring as well. Just come to a stop, the idle should drop, and it does. And um, causes the alarm signal that's sent from the, sorry, the immobilised signal that's sent from the alarm ECU to the petrol engine ECU to get disrupted. And um, it causes them to not start. So I had lots of these in for non-starting issues, which are uh, easy for us to sort. Pretty much a drop-in job, actually. But yeah, um, I can be in any gear in this car now, and it's smooth. Uh, it just does exactly what I'm asking it to on the throttle pedal, without any hesitation or uh, arguing against me. Um, nice Morgan to drive as well. Being a 4 litre has got nice amounts of torque. But the key thing is, which is what it came in for, it no longer stalls. Which apparently it was doing uh, almost every junction. So we'll just pull over here again. Just double check that. So we're down to 800 there straight away. As soon as we stop, it drops down to 750. Lovely. We'll turn around here, Steve. Another one sorted. Another one sorted. Can go back to the owner. I think it's being collected from us on Monday. We're, um, we have a driver that we use called Nigel, who's very good. Collects a lot of our cars for us. Brings them in when customers are too far away to drive them in. All the cars are immobilised and won't drive in. So uh, he's actually picking up another Morgan for us today. That's on top of the other Morgan that we may or may not have already seen because we haven't filled that bit yet. We don't know where you're editing and, it in. And depending on when this goes out today, it might actually be yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> or the day before that, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm a bit cold though, I'm just going to shut the window, I think. Okay. Did it help much? There we go. Oh, it's lovely now. Oh, that's right, back to the back gate then. Right, um... This Morgan has come all the way in from Romania. Um, it's probably worth noting where a lot of cars come from <laughs> to be corrected and sorted and tuned here. Uh, this MG was the other side of Oxford, did I just say? I did, didn't I? Yes. Yeah, uh, Farrington, I think. But yeah, the other side of Oxford. Um, so that was collected and, and brought in. This blue Morgan was Keswick. The red Morgan is Romania. This was just up the road. Um, in fact, I could have walked there, but yeah, 
and the MG was Truro, if I'm pronouncing correctly, in Cornwall. Um, and then there's the other ones that weren't local either, that have all been trailered in. And then the other one that Nigel's collecting today that is yeah. from somewhere else. Would look lovely in this lineup. It would. Well, Nigel. it'll be here in a little while. Yes, come on, Nigel. <laughs> and the D90 from the north of Scotland that's in, uh, that you saw the block cats on. Anyway, Red Morgan we were talking about. So I believe this has a 4.6 in from everything I've been told. As you can see, it's not what we normally see under bonnet. This one does come with a bonnet stay. Uh, which I just need to put on this pin here, like so. Um, so it's on a standalone ECU, which I've yet to dig out to see if we can do anything with in terms of talking to it, if the software is still available, etc. On Gen V throttle bodies, which obviously look amazing, but they are actually fuel injected throttle bodies, not the old car breaded style. Um, and uh, it's come in again, stalling issues. Um, the engine does not run right at tick over apparently. It's coming with a flat battery. It's only arrived yesterday, so the battery's now on charge, so we can start looking at a few things on it. Um, the customer is more than happy to remove all of this if we need to, because what he wants is reliability in a car he can use in Romania that doesn't need to be sent back to England to get sorted when a standalone engine management system that no one over there understands starts going wrong. So, uh, but we'll have a look at this injection system first, see what we can do with it. We'll definitely be throwing these in the bin. Um, it's on Bosch Thor coil plaques uh, up here. However, I don't actually think they're genuine Bosch ones. So again, if they're aftermarket, um, we, we will be disposing of those and putting some Bosch ones on while we do have a look at this injection system. Um, we actually got power graphs through from this as well. And it's a, a nice talky little engine. Um, so uh, that will be good to uh, get our teeth stuck into. Um, the P6, we're gonna do a full sort of photo shoot on this to obviously do the advert um, after it's been fully detailed but right now should we just go for a drive yeah go on then yeah okay um, better find the keys I reckon they're probably in the box with every other key we've got around here of a vehicle that you could use every day if you wanted to because it just works and starts every time you go to it but um, you know needs a garage and that to maintain its current state and somebody to love it um, and equally enjoy it I know I would but I ain't got a garage and um, probably wouldn't lend itself very well to being off-roaded, which is more my cup of tea at the moment. But this is just, uh, it just puts a smile on your face everywhere you drive it. And anyone that looks at it, uh, which they do, um, yeah, just uh, ticks all the boxes of classic cars, really. system and um, yeah 
it. It will be very sad to not see this local to us anymore. I dare say it will probably uh, go to a collector or somebody that does classic car shows and things. Um, not on our doorstep. If it did still remain on our doorstep, that would be great because we would thoroughly uh, enjoy continuing to look after this vehicle. But there's the P6, which um, will now be being uh, thoroughly cleaned underneath on the chassis, which doesn't really need, but we're going to go over the whole thing. Uh, everything under the engine bay is going to be detailed. Uh, obviously the outside trim, inside trim, etc. And then Steve will be doing a nice photo library, won't you? Yes. Um, for the advert of this car. If there's anybody seriously interested in this initially, um, obviously get in contact. Um, Info.v8engines.com, give us a call, drop us a Facebook message, and uh, we'll send a link over. Put this one in here. Um, I don't know. Uh, under one of them, but next to the other. Right, we'll put the cover on that, tuck it up for the night, and uh, yeah. Set to work on it in a few days' time when we cleared up the other ones. Do you think we have enough Morgans now? Nah, there's room for more. Uh, thought we'd take a break from the cars and show you some of the engines Holly's been busy building. Um, this is a 4.6 stage 1, uh, which is destined for Discovery 2. Um, customer sent down a couple of covers um, so we could just sort of finalise the build before it gets sent up to him. Unfortunately, he didn't send the inlet manifold down, which is normally nice because we can seal this off, obviously, but they all get bagged up before they get sent out, so that's not a major problem. Sumps on there, though, makes it easier to transport. This one is a 3.5, um, I believe, standard engine. Yes, yeah, so it's got a Piper Torque Max camshaft, uh, Cloy's duplex timing chain set because it's running obviously the V-belt front end being a 3.5 and is destined to be heading over to Germany uh, to go into a 1988 classic Range Rover over there. Uh, this is being shipped out. I think uh, the customer's asked for another timing cover. He suspects there might be some problems with his so we're just going to clean and prep a timing cover for him and a sump. There was something else as well he asked for. Uh, oh, oil pump gears of course. Yeah, always a good idea. Um, this is another one of our dyno test cell engines, so this goes and runs 23 hours a day, um, 7 days a week on a dyno test cell to age catalytic converters, uh, 4 litre, 4 engine setup. Uh, I think we must be up to 60, 63, this is number 3 of the batch of 5 of this, uh, um, yeah, this lot, so I think we're about, this is number 63 we built for those. Um, all in the age of, uh, aim of uh, aging catalysts. Um, and then this block, this is a bare block, obviously you can see top hatted. Obviously it's been pressure tested with no liners in it first. We only ever top hat blocks and use them if they are not cracked. Um, if they're cracked they are uh, coffee tables essentially. So um, it's been uh, top hatted. I don't know if you can come around here, Steve. Actually, show people this side. If you look at, if I spin it around, if you look at the engine number there, we stamped on it. I'm going to cover it with my fingers just in case uh, anyone wants to clone it. But anyhow, uh, you'll see uh, minus 0 0.007. So that is what this block has been decked by um, after the lines are put in. So to make sure everything's nice and flush, um, lines get inserted, and then everything's planed off. And this has had 
seventh O taken off, which is always worth noting, which is why our blocks have it stamped on. Um, Holly's just laid a couple of bits out for us here. The nice uh, 4.6 plus 20 pistons, uh, rings on, obviously uh, orientates the gaps on these before they go in and uh, installed on the rods uh, for one way for the other because uh, obviously you've got an orientation of the rod there and the piston. We've seen what happens when you get that wrong. We, yeah, and, how, <laughs> and very, very wrong on that old 3.5 engine. And then uh, freshly uh, blasted and ground and then polished crankshaft. So this has been taken to 1010. Um, so 10th hour under size on both mains and big end. Uh, and Holly will now be installing uh, the crank in there and then putting the pistons and rods in. Um, and that engine is being built uh, going over to the States as a stage one. So we'll have the Piper 270 camshaft and we're sending it over as a turnkey engine to go into a Defender which is going to be left-hand drive, so we do a little modification to uh, the bracketry that would normally be in a P38 Range Rover. I'm pointing out there because it's P38s, but um, yeah, so we do modification to the belt uh, where it goes so it misses the steering shaft because um, they steering wheel's on the wrong side over there, isn't it? They'll learn one day. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's a bit cold and wet out. Should we take the Westfield out? Every time. Yeah. We've never driven one of those in nice weather, I don't I think. I know. Let's, uh, let's go and see what we can find. Okay, so this is the third Morgan in with us uh, at the moment. And uh, basically under the bonnet here is exactly the same as what was under the bonnet of the MGR V8. So 3.9 hot wire fuel injected uh, Range Rover engine running Range Rover fuel map. So this has come in for our normal program of, uh, we call it kind of correction phase. So Tornado ECU chip, ignition upgrades. Uh, this car is gonna go one step further and we're actually going to fit our full Morgan exhaust system with our 100 cell sports cat and free flow um, silencers. So that will make a big difference to how this drives mid to upper rev range because the cats are really restrictive on uh, most standard cars really this era, but definitely Morgans. Um, we weren't going to put this in the video, but it's on the ramp now. We weren't going to make a special one, but here we go. The D90 um, hasn't featured in any of our videos yet, but this has come down from North Scotland um, for a revving issue. Wouldn't rev past 3000 RPM. Uh, somebody already checked the cats. Uh, there's photos of this on our Facebook page showing the cat lodged in the Y piece. Um, but there, somewhere, we didn't it? go straight there because it came down to us for all the sensors to be checked and everything. The more technical bit that they couldn't do in Scotland, how, or at the garages in Scotland, I'm sure someone up there probably could have, but um, the people that checked the cats didn't do the job properly because it was the right hand bank was just lodged in the Y piece. So, uh, 200 cell sports cats on this, um, and uh, yeah, we're just grafting them into the original Y piece. Uh, the customer wasn't, that didn't really want our full exhaust system and everything, he just wanted the car back on the road drivable, so this was the uh, most feasible option. Uh, Steve and Holly are now working on getting this back in, so um, yeah, uh, what's next? What have we just done but haven't done? I'm not sure. The Westfield. <laughs> All this time travel stuff sort of oh, messes oh, with my head. It messes with my head as well, mate. You're the other one that's got to edit it all together. One day uh, we'll write a script. Let's go look at the MG under the bonnet of that, shall we? Sure, why not? Right, hang on. There. Okay, we, we didn't go over there, Steve, because we just picked up the cats that came off this car. Name that tune. Um, that's the one that's not that bad. This one, it's a really good one, I think. Huh. There's some of it. Um, I don't know if you can get this, but can you see in there? Mm, not really. Not really. Oh, there you go. There we go. Um, and, and the other end? And the other end. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Hang on, let's try and get this between us. Oh, look at that shot there. Yeah, there's your cat. Well, bits of it. So, um, wasn't very good for exhaust flow. Uh, let's go over there now. And here's the underbonnet of the MG then. We have now got the um, remote oil filler base. I'm pretty certain I mentioned in the intro that we didn't have one, it's now turned up since uh, filming the intro. So we're now up and running and tuning on this. It's just been down from MOT, because um, obviously we only drive cars with MOTs regardless of this MOT exemption law of certain ages. Um, 
We supply this engine directly to the customer. Uh, it's a 3.9 stage one, so 270 camshaft, stage one heads, pipe valve springs, Edelbrock carburetor, our ignition kit. The customer put it in, fired it up, and then decided he didn't have time to kind of uh, finish the car off, so trailed it down to us, asked us to do a nut and bolt uh, spanner check on it, which Steve has uh, done. Uh, he did know the fire, so the, a couple of bits that he knew were loose. Uh, mainly steering items, which obviously it's well worth telling us about, but we, we Steve uh, found them in a few more, obviously. Um, so now it's just uh, road setup and uh, putting a few local miles on the engine, which the customers asked us to do to sort of finish it off before you collect it. Um, not sure if we'll get time to road test this one in this video because we also want to uh, uh, go out in the Westfield, as I mentioned a minute ago. So I think maybe we'll do a workshop update with this MG and the dark blue Morgan in the next update video. How does that sound, Steve? You're just messing with my mind now. You're, yeah. just, you're doing it deliberately. So we've just got the Westfield to go out in there. Yes. I'm putting it off because I keep looking outside. Uh, no traction. No traction. It's more or less fun depending on which seat you're in. <laughs> I think also cold and wet, but we'll, we'll, we'll try and find a break in the weather. Right then. Um, Obviously bonnet off, we're going to go for drive in a second. Uh, 3.9 hot wire engine, uh, we've done the ECU chipping, um, Tornado ECU chip and ignition upgrade, so we've got an RPI amplifier tucked down in the front there. Um, brand new Bosch coil, magna cool leads, um, this also required a distributor um, as well. Um, and we found the throttle position sensor was faulty, uh, really notchy, it wasn't returning properly and giving uh, basically just 5 volts throughout. There was a little bit of variation but obviously it should start at 0.35 and go up to about 4.6, 4.8 on full throttle. Uh, we've replaced the throttle cable because that was notchy and giving a really bad throttle experience. Uh, you couldn't drive the car steadily or accelerate gently, it was more like an on-off switch for the first 25%. All of this combined, and now a correct breather setup, um, well, leads to uh, what we'll now do on road test. Yes. I just really don't want that to be wet because that black stuff on the road and those black tyres don't, don't. You should have thought of that yeah. before you were in England. <laughs> um, let's go. Cool. Um, finish the. Keep rolling. Let's just wait for Laurie to go past. Okay, uh, road test in the Westfield then, it's all done. Uh, we've even sorted this sticky throttle by replacing the throttle cable. And um, this is going to be a bit of a waste of time road test, Steve. It's a bit soggy. It's damp out and no weight on the bag wheels. It's ridiculous. So the car's doing everything it should now do. I would love a dry road just to uh, fully test it on. Um, we have taken up the rev range to make sure there's no issues um, up at five, 6,000 RPM, but um, only by tickling the throttle up there. The throttle is so much better on this after finding the throttle position sensor was faulty and obviously replacing that cable. We've now got full control, I can just accelerate smoothly. I'll tell you what, if you want to be one with nature, this is a great way of doing it. This is, yeah. I should have put a hat on really, I think. Second, I'll just give it a little squeeze, all right? Go on then. Hey! <laughs> that wasn't full throttle. That was, was half to three quarter throttle. It's a the, waste of time. The back end was getting squirrely. A complete waste of time. Way. But it's good fun, and 
that engine is so crisp now. Just responds to every little every little throttle input you give it. Even in fourth gear. Let's put it in fifth gear. It's still pulling. As it will in a car that weighs <laughs> probably only a little bit more than my push bike. It's got a bigger engine than your push bike though. Uh, what if I have Weetabix? Well, well, then it's a different story. I have no idea where the wipers are in this car. Let's do that one. Well, hey. they're, they're generally on the windscreen, one. mate. Okay, so, uh, it is now about to rain. We need to get back. We've chipped the ECU, um, we already had the Westfield plenum carbon plenum on here, we've done our ignition upgrades, uh, corrected the, uh, all the sensors that we had, and uh, this is the result.